Good to see you again, children of God. As you can see, we're going to talk about insects today. And I hope that doesn't bug you. That's still so funny. Humor me here, people. Insects are fascinating to me. Um, they're so intricate and we think that they're just like brown and black, but really they have lots of colors. In fact, in the comments, I'm going to have Paul put um, a link for you to a site that's called Microangela. Love that site because it uses a high powered microscope to look at insects, especially their eyes. And then you can see all the colors in God's beautiful creation. What we're looking at here are cicadas, aren't we? And I remember when I was eight years old and my family moved here to Nebraska, I remember the first summer I started to see these empty insects and I could not figure them out. My goodness, here's an insect where the top part of it split open and there's nothing inside. There's no guts inside or anything. And a lot of the time I would find them just hanging on a tree. So here's something that doesn't have anything alive in it and it's still hanging on a tree. Well, I've been finding these lately on my morning walk and kind of collect them because I thought maybe we could talk about them. And then one day I hit the jackpot because on my driveway I found a shell, an insect shell like that, and then I found the cicada that probably came out of it right next to it. And because it came out on the driveway, it wasn't very successful. And so this bug is dead. And that means it's okay for us to bring it inside. Usually if we find insects outside, we want to observe them in their natural habitat. Because if we bring insects inside, they're not happy. And usually our parents aren't happy either. But they're worth looking at outside. But it's amazing to me that this huge cicada came out of this shell that is probably about half as big as it is. So a cicada has an interesting life cycle. Um, the adult lays eggs, of course, and when the eggs hatch, the early nymphs say, we don't want to live above ground, and they bury themselves underground, and they stay under there for several years. Um, so we think, because our cicadas come out every year, um, it's easy to imagine that they go under for one year and then they come out, but really they're under there for a couple of years and just some of them emerge. So we, they, every year a few of them come out. But they're growing there underground and they don't come out until the insect is inside of that shell ready to go. Then they come out and they molt. That shell splits open and they climb out. This is just so cool because you think how complicated that is just for this in adult insect to come out. In fact, our cicadas are probably underground for about two to five years, but in some parts of the country, the cicadas only come out once every 17 years. So they live underground like that for almost an entire child's lifetime. So if those eggs were planted or they were laid, um, when you were born, you wouldn't see those cicadas until you were in high school. And then they all come out at the same time. So they are everywhere. And I'm sure the noise is deafening because one of the best things about cicadas is that they sing. You know, when we first moved here, I remember hearing the noise outside my bedroom window. And I remember telling my dad, can you turn that noise off? I can't get to sleep. <laughs> but now that cicada noise helps me to sleep. And there's another link for you to check out too that will play that cicada sound for you so you can identify that sound. And it will show you up close how the cicadas make that noise because in their abdomen, the bottom part of the insect body, they have um, structures that are kind of like drums. And so they shake their whole belly and that makes that sound. It's very, very fast sound. It's pretty cool. Now, this is kind of amazing to me, what God has done here, 
that he has created something so intricate and so complicated just for the, what's best for an insect. Because you know what? The purpose of this insect, once they're born, it's not much. Their life is pretty carefree, as a matter of fact. They don't have to spin a web like their spider cousins, because spiders aren't bugs, they're arachnids. They don't have to spin a web to catch their food. They don't have to build a nest like a wasp. They don't have to go from flower to flower to collect nectar to make honey like bees do. They don't even have to find human beings or other animals to bite to get blood like mosquitoes and ticks. They just sing. They just come out, they climb up on a tree, tree branch or a tree trunk where they're camouflaged and they sing and sing and their purpose is to find each other, get together with other cicadas and lay eggs and then they're done. So all of that happens just so these insects can serve their purpose in God's world. Love that. So let's take a look at our Bible verse. We do have a verse that's from the readings for this Sunday, um, from the epistle reading, so Romans 8.28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. Now this verse is a little bit long, but it is such a good verse for memorizing, for tucking away in your head so you can get it out later when your heart needs it or when someone else's heart needs it because it reminds us how God has a purpose for us, just like he has a purpose for cicadas, and that he has a life plan for us that works for our good. We don't have a life cycle, we don't lay eggs and molt, thank goodness, because, you know, would you want to find a child's skin lying around somewhere in the house because a child molted out of their skin? He's got a different purpose for us, doesn't he? Um, he loves us and he wants us to share God's word with others and to worship and praise him too. Now if you're going to memorize this verse as a family, I recommend you divide this one up into several parts and practice each person in the family saying a different part or kind of bouncing it back and forth. And we know that for those who love God, you could stop right there, all things work together for good. The next person can say, for those who are called according to his purpose, the third person can say, and then the last one can say Romans 8, 28. Or if you've just got three people, you just pass it around, or two people, you pass it back and forth. And then pretty soon, you're able to remember the whole verse. So what is so comforting about this verse? I want to start by looking at the last part those who are called according to his purpose. And what does that mean? I think that's a fancy way of saying children of God. You know, God called us by name. We were brought to the family of God and brought into the family of God through our baptism. And God loves us and he has a purpose for us. So, and not part of that purpose is to help us to love him. So we don't have to say, ooh, i got to make sure I love God. If I love God good enough, then he'll make good things happen for me. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> God loves us no matter what. He loves us when we love him back. He loves us when we are a bit grumpy with him. He loves us when good things are happening. He loves us when bad things are happening. He loves us no matter what. But this verse reminds us that he makes sure all things in our life work together for our good even if it doesn't feel that way. You know, teachers and parents, we kind of understand that business about things not feeling like it helps. Um, you know, I, I might want God to make things happen in a certain way for me, and if God doesn't make the right things happen, then I think he's not working it for my good. But in reality, God knows what's good for me, and part of what's good for me might be something I don't like. I remember when I taught kindergarten, I remember a couple of times talking to a student and talking to them very quietly and gently, and maybe we were talking about something they were doing that was not helpful for them for learning or helping their, their friends to learn, and my student would look at me and say, stop yelling at me! <laughs> and I would sigh and I would say, I'm not yelling at you, 
I'm just saying something you don't want to hear. And sometimes it's like that with our parents too. Sometimes they tell us what's good for us, but it's not what we want to hear. And that's true with God too. But the beauty of this verse is that we can know that everything that happens, God will work it together for our good. And that big, number one, most important good is that when we die, we will be with Him in heaven. And that's the good that lasts forever, doesn't it? So when we think about this, then we can be the cicada and we can just sing. <laughs> and we do our work and we go to school and we do what God asks us to do and what our parents ask us to do. But in our hearts, we're just singing to God and saying, thank you, God, for creating this beautiful life for me. So let's join together in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you've called us by our name and that you call us your children. And we thank you that you are working everything in our life for our good because you love us so very much. Help us to remember that every day in good times and in bad. Amen. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to continue our work on the Lord's Prayer. Um, so a reminder that if you are learning the Lord's Prayer in sign language and you want to practice it, we have a version where I do the whole Lord's Prayer and it's on the Faith Lincoln YouTube channel there on the playlist for children's messages. But today we are going to learn how to sign a couple of petitions. We're going to learn how to sign, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in some prayers you might say, forgive us our sins. That's what trespasses are, they're sins. So there's a couple of versions and they're all good. I like this section of the prayer and how it goes with our Bible verse because the first part we're asking God to give us what we need to be able to live a healthy life and not just bread but the other things that we need too um, like maybe a yummy grilled hot dog to go inside of that bread bun or a big glass of milk or lemonade to go with that meal and some watermelon too let's have some fruit right um, we're asking him for a good night's sleep because we need that. We're asking him for um, times when we can play outside and be healthy or even medicine that we need when we're sick. Um, we're asking God to bake everything together for our good. And the second part of this section of the prayer is for our good too. Because if we couldn't get forgiveness from God and we couldn't forgive each other, our lives would just fall apart. So let's go ahead and learn that. We start with give us. The sign for give uses two hooked fingers. And if I'm giving you something, I would sign it in this direction. But if God is giving me something, I come up here and I sign it down this way. So give us this day. So this is the sign for now. And if you do it twice, it means right now. Like if your mom asks you to take out the garbage and you say, yeah, I'll get to it. And then she says, now, that's what she means right there. So give us this day our daily, and this is the sign for tomorrow. So when you do it a bunch of times in a row, you're talking about tomorrow and then the next day and the next day and the next day because we need daily bread every day, don't we? Having it once isn't good enough. So give us this day our daily bread. Now I'm holding a long thin loaf of bread. Um, sometimes we call that a baguette. And that's because uh, most of our sign language here in the United States comes from France. And a baguette is the kind of bread they make in France. So there was a man from France who developed a sign language there and then he came to the United States to teach deaf people here. So some of our signs come from France and bread is one of them. So we hold a loaf of bread and we pretend to cut off pieces. So give, us a, give us this day our daily bread. Now the sign for forgive, beautiful sign where we clean off 
our hand. Okay? Forgive us our trespasses. This is the sign for sin. Notice we're not signing, forgive us the things that we've done. But instead, we're talking about the fact that we are sinners living in a sinful world. And done is not going to happen <laughs> in regards to sin in our life. Not until we've gone to heaven. Then our sins will be done. So forgive us our sins. And we can think in our head our daily sins, can't we? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those. Here I am forgiving different people as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we don't even have to sign that last part. We can just do this, forgive those who trespass against us. Because in sign language, it just makes sense that I'm using that same sign talking about my sins, that now I'm forgiving other people for their sins against me and my sins, asking them to forgive me for my sins. Okay, so we'll put it together. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Oh, good. I hope you're learning that. It's just a fun way to say the Lord's Prayer. I like it because it makes you think about different things that, that the prayer has, different meanings that the prayer has, instead of just simply repeating it. Makes you think about it. Okay, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, I want to talk to you a little bit about our um, Teach Them to Your Children kit. And I wanted to mention this card that says Teaching Tips on it. And you will notice what I've included in there on Teaching Tips is that I'm talking about um, some doctrinal issues because it's so important when we teach children um, about God is that we teach it to them with the right perspective and we call that teaching law and gospel so we understand both it's so easy to use the Bible just to teach children to be good it's so easy for us even as adults to think if I can just be good enough then I'll get into heaven and to focus on improving our own lives. And the suggestions on this card remind us on special ways to talk about how we are only able to, for instance, to love God because He's loved us first. That's um, putting the gospel before the law, isn't it? And then, then we know we're not earning it. So I hope these tips are helpful to you. Um, but I also want to tell you that and remind you a little bit that while these kind of lessons with cicadas and Bible verses and art projects, they're all interesting lessons to do and I hope you've been enjoying them. It's not what we're asking you to do with your children. The lesson itself is not as important as the layers, as talking about your God with your children every day in one way or another and having everything that you teach them remind them of that important truth that I've said before in this session that God loves us no matter what. There isn't anything that we can do to make God stop loving us. And there isn't anything that we can do to make God love us more. He just loves us. Well, my prayer is a prayer of blessing to you as you work with your children. And hopefully we'll see you again next week.